Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, if ever someone asks you what your favorite genre is, someone will probably be like, oh, you know, I like, I just like sci-fi, I like mystery, whatever. They, they use very basic uh, genre terms. For me, if, I, if asked, what's your favorite genre? I would probably say post-war German literature with themes of uh, disillusionment and rebuilding. I read a lot of this era of German post-war lit kind of for a few reasons. Uh, they just they just tend to be they speak they speak to me a lot. They, I feel they speak to a modern reader in our zone of the world very well, the Western world in a sense. Uh, basically because they deal with this idea of your world collapsing, like your the way you've seen the world no longer exists the way you've been told, the way you thought it worked. And so instead of dealing with uh, major heroes or things like that, they tend to deal with just like everyday people. You know, us as readers, we aren't, uh, you know, muscle bound heroes or like people with political power. We're just regular people trying to deal with our lives. And so like this theme in literature is one that I find very moving, very poignant, and I tend to read a lot of it. Uh, lately, I've been reading this book, Berlin Calling by Paul Hockenos. Hockenos, if I pronounce that right. Uh, this is a history, so I've been talking about literature novels, but uh, this is like a social history about Berlin in particular, post-war, kind of talking about the split between East and West Berlin. But what I love about it so much is that, like, the story of anarchy, music, the wall, and the birth of the New Berlin, uh, it deals with just people. It deals with punks, churches, uh, people in squats and collectives, bands and venues, and how that shaped what Berlin, uh, the formation of like a new Germany, that kind of stuff. You know, the the people that we are as readers, the people that we are, like, people who play in uh, punk bands and uh, publish and try to just do things in our lives, obviously wielding no political power other than what we can do in our little zone and community. So uh, Berlin Calling in particular kind of is prompting this idea about just very much recognizing what I read uh, as some uh, favorites, favorite genres of my own uh, for German lit. So I'm just gonna highlight a couple of things that I think you as a reader might like, or at least ones that like. I've read a, I've read a ton, always reading more. So in my 152 reads, there's actually a ton more of this like era of post-war German lit. Uh, but I want to highlight those, and I want to highlight how they're very similar to uh, one of my favorite Canadian writers, Douglas Copeland, and how they're similar. I'll see if I can uh, pull off this thesis. Sort of starting off, our major, our first big name, is going to be Gunter Grass. Uh, I don't know, like, in my generation, I don't know if he's really touted. I don't know if he's uh, really name-checked all that much. Um, in particular, kind of the one I'll, you need to talk about is Tin Drum. Like, Tin Drum is, could be one of the my, the, my, if I was actually making a list of my favorite novels, Tin Drum would be high above it. It's spectacular. Uh, sort of about a kid who, at the age of three, decides to no longer grow up, and so his body is stunted, and he kind of like bangs a tin drum through uh, the for through pre-World War II, post-World War II, and kind of like all of kind of just watches German society happen. Uh, the film is good, but it is about half of the actual book and kind of doesn't even touch on all the post-war stuff that I'm actually really interested in. Uh, but Gunter Grass in particular, he's like 
the name for this idea, I guess, what of post-war German lit, kind of articulate how do you as a society rebuild? How do you as a uh, world, after experiencing such atrocity, after ex having like this, everything you've known about your world completely destroyed, how do you rebuild? What is, what is life after what you thought life was to be nullified? So in this notion of, hello, uh, in this notion of German post-war lit, like Günter Grassi in particular will kind of focus on just how they as a people deal with their world. And a lot of times they even deal with, uh, like Crab Walk in particular is about dealing with neo-nazism which is i feel very pertinent to even now so it's it's something that we as a world can really uh understand focus on uh okay okay i've got a cat on my lap we'll see how much i could do this uh i want to tell you about how german is it by walter abish uh, same, same deal, uh, sort of, this one's set in the 70s, but sort of dealing with about, like, how do you define yourself as a German, being someone who has largely, what, what Germany was has been negated. Uh, it was founded on the party, it was founded on, uh, like, this one notion, this one political uh, agenda and ideology, and clearly that was seen as a, like the whole thing was destroyed, negated, uh, seen as the atrocity it was. But for the regular German people, uh, they have, they can no longer take pride in their country, they can no longer take pride in like themselves as a per people. And so it's like that idea of like, uh, what is, what is it, what is it, what does it mean to be German when you, you have no world? when you're, you can't even, you, you're like ashamed to even say that you're German. So, um, a very interesting notion that I try to focus on. So, so that's kind of my big question with this guy. How German is it? I use that as the question for, uh, my Goodreads list of all my uh, German novels, just trying to figure out what is that, uh, notion of, Germanness. How do you define Germanness when your world has been destroyed? So post World War II, kind of Berlin uh, became sort of the most interesting case study for a city that was weirdly in exile. They were surrounded by, you know, Russian controlled, and they had like half of Germany uh, cut in half. And even Ber then in Berlin, they did the exact same thing, cut it in half. Uh, so, uh, with Peter Schneider's The Wall Jumper, uh, the character in particular is, jumps the Berlin Wall and sort of trans, transgresses, trans, uh, traverses, traverses the two societies, uh, East and West Berlin. I'm surrounded by cats right now. East and West Berlin, that, uh, he's got ties to both sides. And so it's a city that was, like, divided but really it's trying to reconcile, well, which, which part of Berlin am I a part of? Which part of Germany am I a part of? So uh, Peter Schneider's, Schneider's wall jumper uh, kind of really articulates that idea of like the microcosm of the division of the German people, but also our world post atrocity. Uh, and then I definitely want to call your attention to uh, Sabal's works, especially the emigrants, uh, sort of dealing with the idea of exile in that time, uh, sort of with, obviously, Jewish people were exiled, but even just like sympathizers, so people who were tied to uh, German, like Germany as a country, but could not live in the country based on race or political agenda. So uh, in The Emigrants, uh, our narrator follows 
uh, four different German exiles. Uh, all have left for different reasons, but kind of all are experiencing something sort of similar in their feeling disconnected from the country they were born in, from uh, the way their world used to work, and uh, really kind of encapsulating that. A lot of Sebald's work focuses on uh, that aspect, so I would even suggest like any of Sebald's stuff is fantastic. Uh, but I just kind of found the emigrants to be the most affecting in that it really articulated that idea of exile, about being uh, not a part of the world you once had. Uh, and this, I thought, was wonderful. And I'd love to point out the work of Gregor von Rizori. This one in particular, Members of an Anti-Semite, even though it's set between the wars, it largely deal it's really trying to articulate that post-war idea it was published uh, like in the 70s uh it sort of deals with that idea of like the way anti-semitism uh was like pushed on the german people and in, in very subtle ways it wasn't even like this uh very pervasive thing it was just like little ideas that permeated their things and it's sort of like in look in hindsight seeing how those things happened and came about uh, and even just being, like, the honesty in this book, even though it's a novel, it's, uh, it's very, uh, like, semi-autobiographical. Yeah, very, yeah, honest in trying to articulate, like, a very, like, a gross aspect of yourself. A, uh, something you very, would very rarely want, not want to admit. And, uh trying to see like how it came how he got there and then what the results were afterwards i feel this idea of having a world that we thought existed crumbling and how do we as people regular people in this world as regular readers trying to reconcile this crumbling of the world we thought we knew. Um, so in particular, I want to talk about Douglas Copeland and these two novels in particular, uh, Player One and Generation A. Obviously, Copeland and all this German lit I've brought up is very different to each other, uh, but thematically I think is kind of the idea that makes them very uh, poignant and uh, together in particular. Uh, so Generation A is about, I would call both of these speculative novels, even though they're not sci-fi in the sense that they are, you know, distant years in the future. They're a future, a very real and scary future that are, you know, five years away, 10 years away, not, yeah, not at all implausible. Uh, Generation A about when bees become extinct, and then player one sort of about a guy experiencing an airport when the price of oil spikes and people just go crazy. So both those I, those notions, those things that like could make our world collapse, you know, they're they're 15 minutes away. But I think what Copeland really does well is he's very much articulating the now for us as Canadians, but also as people of a, you know, post-God, post-9-11, now post-COVID, post, like, post-boom, uh, imminent uh, societal, uh, not collapse, but, uh, you know, dwindling of what we had. We're in that world, and in my sense, I actually feel it's very much a post-war world. We're living in a world that we can't, we can't get back the glory days, we can't get back, uh, or, or even just seeing that the way we used to live is unsustainable, uh, created atrocities, and, uh, you know, even being uh, confronted with those atrocities and uh, that... Uh, lack of empathy that we used to have. And so like Copeland in particular 
sometimes to his detriment, very much focuses on the now, because I don't even think you could, uh, like, Microsurfs, for instance, is so much of a time capsule that it's kind of almost, almost hilarious in its uh, datedness, in a sense. But that's actually why it's, why Copeland's good, because he's actually speaking to us now. So these ones in particular, even his new one, Binge, uh, really much speaks to, like, the post-COVID world. But these two, I kind of, are the ones that I feel very much tie to that idea of post-war German lit. The idea of how we as people deal with this idea of our world no longer being what it was and how we reconcile it. And obviously I don't think there's any answers to that question. I don't think we're going to be able to, you know, make ourselves uh, ascend from this notion. But that's why it's so interesting to explore in literature. These are questions that don't have answers, but they're questions that we want to explore. I'm not even sure if I articulated all that all that well, but I just mostly wanted to just show you a little bit about this thing that's fascinated me, this theme in literature that uh, I think really speaks to us as, you know, 21st century readers in Canada, in North America, in the West, in the world, that, you know, it's the, the, the notion of history repeating and learning from history. Uh, not even learning from history, but learning from, uh, learning from literature where we as a people go now that our world is not what it was. And at the very least, I hope uh, some of this can just work as some book recommendations, like uh, maybe five or six really great post-war German lit novels that I think, you know, I, g I gave five out of five. I think they're spectacular. Every one that I kind of touched on today, I think are incredible. Mm actual works of art that speak to us now. These are books that are 50, 60, 70 years old and all are as pertinent to now as any novel written today. Ah, well, thanks for joining me today on the channel. Just wanted to tell you about some books. I think I did it. Uh, stay tuned, read lots.